today we're going to show you what an actual honest look of chores on the homestead look like. Right now, while there's not snow on the ground, we use the truck to bring all of our stuff over to do the animals. It is quite a distance walking from the feed shed over to here and then down to the bees. When the snow flies, I have no idea how we're going to do this. We'll have to get some sort of sled, make a sled to pull across the snow. Yeah. That'll be the easiest way. The only problem being is our water situation. So right now we have about 150 feet of hose that comes from the house out here. Uh, yesterday or the day before, I think it was frozen. So obviously it's going to get colder. The hose is going to freeze. What we've done in the past is we just fill buckets up inside and, and then carry it out that way. Yeah, it should be interesting because this house is a lot different than the other one and the only way to fill up our buckets is in the bathtub. But we'll worry about that when the snow flies. For now, we're using the truck and we're driving over here and we're using the hose. Ready to get started? Yeah, sure. Let's do this. The first thing we like to do in the morning, or at least I like to do in my routine, is I always do the chickens first and we always start with the fermented feed first. Once the fermented feed is on the ground, all the ones that have escaped and are running around the yard tend to run back in and then that's when we can do the other animals. If we do the other animals first, the chickens that are outside run into those pens and they start eating the pig food and the goat food. This gate is something that we need to fix. We just haven't got around to it since we got here. Our fencing is not where it needs to be right now and it's definitely something that needs to get fixed. We do have a latch for on here. It just has yet to be put on. We ferment our feed for anyone that's been following along with us over the last year and a half. It stretches the bag of your feed and it also makes the chickens feel more full than if they're just eating dry feed. Normally we leave this outside in the feed shed over the warmer months, but now that it's getting a little bit cooler, we have to start bringing it inside. The feed will not ferment properly if it's too cold, so it has to come inside. We don't want it to freeze. Our chickens are having a heavy molt right now. They're going through a heavy molt. So they're losing all their feathers and they're gonna grow new ones to get ready for the winter, which is why they're looking a little bit raggedy right now. During that time, they need extra protein. So we do give them extra stuff. Yesterday or two days ago, I made chicken stock. So all of the bones and the little bits of meat that were left over from making the stock, they came back in here just for a little bit of extra protein. So Holly's giving the birds the fermented feed. I'm gonna do the pigs. And for the pigs, they get pig pellet. So this is a mini pig pellet. It has basically everything they need for their diet. There's probably like eight to 10 cups in here, I would think. This is all we give them for the day. It's enough for the two of them. I'm sure they would like more. Um, pigs will eat and eat and eat. So to control their weight, you basically have to control how much food you're giving them. So this is how much we give them. They get their water as well. And then any kind of food scraps. So as you can see, we have four new additions. They're super skittish, but they're super cute as well. Um, mom and dad tend to get a little protective of them. So I'm gonna go in there and they might try and get that to eat, but... So I like to spread it around because it kind of gives them something to do. The pigs love to root, so if I just put it into one pile, they kind of push each other away, so I like to spread it around when I feed them. It kind of gives them a little bit more to do. It takes longer to eat. Look how speedy they are. These guys are super cute. There's no way I'm going to get close enough to pick one up where I would. That one was doing yoga. <laughs> oh, look who's joining us out of her pen. So we have Wally's the male, Emma's the female. Uh, you can see he's got his mohawk up a little bit. He's kind of, he's happy because he's getting food, but he's still a little bit protective of the, the little guys there. So we haven't named the, the babies. There's two boys, two girls. 
and they're for sale if you know anybody. Well, the only one that's been sold is this little little lady here, the black one. So three pink ones left. Yeah, so three pink ones left if uh, any of you guys want one. And she's very thirsty right now. You can tell how she's kind of just not settling. She needs to drink a lot of water when she's nursing because she needs to make more milk for these little guys. So we definitely have to give her water a couple times a day. Now that the chickens have had their fermented feed and the pigs have had their pellets, we're gonna move on to the goats. They're having a real issue with our goats lately and they are not respecting the fence whatsoever. So more stuff that we have to fix. Yeah, for some reason, the last our last house, they didn't have a problem with just the hot wire, but we have hot wire and now we have a couple wraps of barbed wire and they're still jumping over, so. I don't know, they just don't respect the hot wire anymore. No, so they're gonna get different fencing in the springtime. If you haven't heard, goats can be problematic. They get into everything, they jump on stuff. and They jumped into my crab apple tree and ate all the apples as high as they could reach off the trees. And if you're not careful, Vinny will jump up in the truck and eat the food. We always dump our feed, whether it's the fermented feed for the chickens, the pellets for the pigs, or the grain for the goats. It always goes on the ground. We have used containers and bowls and stuff like that before but nobody respects it and nobody cares. So now we just dump it on the ground. They like to scratch around and pick it up. It gives the pigs something to do, like Jeff said, and the goats just tend to make a gigantic mess if it's all in one pile. So it's just easier for us if we spread it out all over the ground and everyone seems to enjoy it more. Well, let's watch Penny make her way back in the fence. She's gonna go all the way around to the back side because there's a spot where it's down just a teeny bit and she's gonna scoot right through it. There's actually chunks of her fur stuck to the barb wire, but her fur is so thick that she just apparently does not care about the barbs. We recently just had an issue in here, and by issue I mean an unexpected surprise. The other day I went in here and I noticed that there was a big mound of straw in the corner. I thought that was weird because the goats never push everything into one pile to sleep on. Um, I went in to have a look and I found 21 duck eggs and a duck has made a nest in there and was sitting on them. So I brought them inside the other day and candled them all. And all 21 of them are fertile and growing. It is November right now and it is most certainly not the appropriate time to be hatching anything, especially ducks. So apparently we're going to have 21 more ducks soon. So if you're looking for a piglet and some ducklings and a goat, because that black goat is available too, you know where to find us. This is something we're gonna have to figure out for the winter because these get frozen so fast. In the winter last year, I think we came out here three or four times a day because they just freeze up so fast, especially in January and February when it's minus 20 or minus 30. We find ourselves out here a lot. We know there's insulated water buckets you can get, but we have zero power out here. to keep it thawed for a little bit longer of a time so if you have any ideas let us know because this is actually it's really just not efficient is the main thing the goats get hay every day as well right now they're getting one flake i was giving them two but since they aren't respecting the fence whatsoever anymore they're not really eating the hay that we put in there because they're wandering around the yard and eating grass there's hay over there they're eating apples so there's really no point we'll just give them the one flake for now and once the months get a little bit colder and they aren't getting out to eat the grass, they'll be getting their regular two flakes. This is our goat feeder that Jeff made. It was actually just a pallet with some sheep and goat fence that we put on the front. It's been destroyed on the front, but it still works as a, a hay feeder for us. As you can see here, they pull out the parts they don't like, they eat the parts they do like, and they make a gigantic mess. One thing we did learn since having goats is just how wasteful they actually are. They waste a lot of stuff, including their food.
Emma's going to town on that water. Normally what I do is I'll fill it up. Uh, is she choking on it? <laughs> Maybe she's gorging herself. She's drinking it too fast. Yeah, too fast. Normally I'll fill it up, then I'll go finish the rest of the chores and make my way back around here and fill this thing up again because she'll... What is that? Yes. She'll... <laughs> she'll normally drink a whole bucket just while I'm going to fill up the other animals. Still a tongue? Yes. <laughs> the smallest one's trying to fight the biggest one. <laughs> In the past, we've had to remove Emma's babies from her shortly after they're born within the first few hours to a day because she just has no spatial awareness and she will not take care of them. The last litter she completely abandoned and we lost almost all of them. This time we actually did not know that she gave birth because she was taking care of them so well. We actually, we didn't even see them. How old were they when you found them? I think four or five days old. They already had a, a good layer of uh, fuzzy hair on them, so they were definitely like four days at least. While we do our best when we bring them in to keep them healthy and fatten them up, there's just absolutely no comparing to what they look like now feeding off of Emma. It's just not comparable whatsoever. They are probably four or five times the size they normally are when we have them inside as they are out here with her. It's actually crazy. Her mother's milk actually helps them out quite a bit. and. We, like Holly was saying, we take them away from her because we don't want them getting crushed, basically. She has no awareness. It's much better for her and the babies if we leave them with her, but we try not to let them die, basically. Yeah, we're doing our best. And actually, this time, she's actually doing a really, really good job. Um, too much of a good job because she won't even let us near them. Yeah, she's very protective. She's very protected this time, but in the past times that she's had litters, she's wanted our help. Like she's basically come to us for help and been grateful that we've taken them and fed them and stuff and returned them back to her. But this time it's not an option. No, and they look way better. Yeah, she's getting snippy if we get near them. Happy and healthy. Ducks are nice and all, but they love making a mess of all these buckets. And when they get out, they'll go into the goat's uh, pen there. And they'll actually sit in those buckets and make a mess in there too. Basically cleaning themselves off. But it's a pain in the butt and I feel bad for the other chickens. Because they literally just leave a sludge of like mud in the bottom. We have this kiddie pool for them. And as you can see, they make a mess of that as well. So this is supposed to be for the chickens. That's supposed to be for the ducks. But the ducks just do whatever they want. I do love the ducks though. They are entertaining and I do love their little babies. Ideally, we have them in a different area so they're not making a gigantic mess of everything, but those are just our future aspirations. Yeah. I want separate spaces for everybody. Yeah, it would be nice to dig them a little pond and they can just kind of come and go as they please, but we'll see. Along with fermented feed for our chickens, we also give them dry feed inside their coop. So they do have a feeder right over here, which we put the dry feed into. The reason we have the board across the door over here is because the ducks will come in and the ducks are like the pigs and have zero boundaries when it comes to food and they will devour this entire thing which is not what we want. So we do have the board there so the ducks can't come in and eat all the food. One egg on this side. And one more over here. Oh. And another one over here. It's that time of year where the girls are all molting and the weather is changing, the days are getting shorter and it is not as warm. So we are down to six to eight eggs a day. Yesterday we somehow ended up with 10, but we're averaging about six to eight right now, which is not very many considering we have about 30 or 40 chickens. 
We don't supplement light. We do not supplement heat. They get a break in the winter as they should. So we have a few chickens that are younger that we hatched earlier in the year. They should technically start laying around now to December. So we might have the odd egg here and there throughout the winter. But for right now, this is all we're doing. There's one there. Oh, and we found one more. And actually there was another one down there yesterday that I forgot about. I saw it right when I was leaving too. So we're pretty much done with the chickens for today. We have two more, three more buckets of water to fill up. After that, we're gonna head down to our chicken tractor and move our meat birds. And that's pretty much our morning chores. We always keep a bowl on the counter or a compost bin and we collect all of our food scraps for the day and we bring them out here and give them to the rest of the animals. Today, I'm gonna give them to the pigs. Sometimes I separate them between everybody, but today I'm just gonna be giving them to the pigs. end of needing grower and we're going to be switching them to finisher. Today when I run into town I'm going to pick up some finisher and they'll be on finisher for three weeks until we process them which is why they only have a little bit in their bucket today. When I get back home I'll top it up with the stuff that they need to be on moving forward. We bring down water over here too because the hose doesn't reach quite this far. So we just carry everything around which is why we use the truck because it's a little bit easier. We've got so much use out of this chicken tractor this year. We've done three rounds of chicken, so I think 75 chickens total, and then we did 10 turkeys. So we have by far made use of this. And as you can see, the door is a bit flimsy and needs to be fixed, but it's because we're in and out of here so many times. that we've been using this, I think, when do we start? May? Uh, April? Yeah, in spring, yeah. Yeah, April, and it's November now. So we've been using it for like six months. Yeah. The door doesn't get treated very nicely. Sometimes when the kids are doing it, they just let it come down and it slams. And then uh, it wasn't built for slamming, so I gotta fix it. So we rotate this daily. Every day we move it to a fresh patch of grass for these guys. They don't have to walk around in their own feces and whatnot, so it's nicer for them, it's cleaner. They get to pick out any kind of bugs that are in there. This will be our last round for the year, so we will be done with meat birds until next spring. Right now we have 18 big fat healthy chickens, and that'll be the last thing that we're adding to the freezer. Or actually, I hope we're adding a deer because deer season starts tomorrow. Two more quick stops and we are done our chores for the day. We just have to swing by the beehives and check on them. It is fall now, so there is very minimal, if no food at all for them to eat. So you have to heavy feed them in the fall so that they're prepared for the winter. So we were feeding them a one-to-one -one sugar water solution and I'm topping it up every few days. So I'm just gonna swing by over there and see how their feeders are doing and see if they need to be topped up. After that, we have one more stop, which is right at the front door. We have a box of chicks there. So I just hatched 30 chicks a week ago, yeah, about a week ago or so. So they're still in the brooder. They're not quite feathered yet. Once they're feathered, they'll go in with the other guys over there. But for now, they're just at the front door. So it's just an additional stop along the way for chores. So they'll pick through and they'll throw out the dead bees or bits of stuff in there that they don't want. Oh, there's still some flying around. We're not doing a full inspection today. I'm just opening a lid to check on their feeders. So they've eaten some. This has been in here for two days, I think. They've eaten some. And I can see them moving around underneath there, actually collecting some syrup out of the jar.
This one's looking about the same. And that one's actually even less. The first hive has eaten the most. The second hive has eaten not as much as the first one. And the third one's eaten even less. But everything looks good to me. So we'll come back in a few days and we'll top them up. And I'll keep doing this until it starts to snow. And once it starts to snow, we'll pull everything. And we will put pillowcases full of shavings in there to create kind of like a moisture wicking type of thing. And then we will be putting these under a tiny little pop-up greenhouse type thing to keep the wind and snow off them. We did that last year and we found that it actually helped. And when we uncovered them in the spring this year, they were incredibly healthy. Everyone's looking good in here. They're starting to get their feathers. So they're, they're not quite ready to go out with the other birds yet. Once all of their feathers come in and all this little fluff is gone, then they'll be able to regulate their heat and I'll be able to put them out with the other birds. But for now, while they're still fluffy, they they have to stay under the heat lamp. We actually got some nice looking birds this time around. I mean, your dad did. Well, half of them are for us. Nice bird. Looks almost like a, a partridge. partridge. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice looking bird. So that concludes a day of uh, homesteading activities for us. If you are thinking about having your own homestead, don't be discouraged. There's a lot of work, there's a lot of daily routine, a lot of maintenance. Yeah, just when you think you have it all sorted and said and done, the goats come through the barbed wire fence and you're right back to square one. Yeah. So yes, there is work to do all the time, but realistically that took us what, 25 minutes? Yeah, half an hour. Yeah, half an hour maybe. A little longer today because we were filming it obviously, but it's 25 minutes if you're actually going and, and being consistent and getting it done right away and not stopping to stare at everything, which... Yeah. And that's 25 minutes if you're doing it by yourself. So. Yeah, if you're doing it with the kids, it's much quicker. Yeah, or each other, yeah. Yeah. So that's an actual honest look at our chores on a day-to-day -day basis. It does vary a bit in the summer. Obviously, it's a lot hotter, so they get more water then. And in the winter, we have to go out a couple more times because the water's freezing. But this is pretty much what our morning looks like every day. That's just the outside chores with animals. Uh, in the summer, once we have gardens and stuff, there's other chores, right? But If you are thinking about getting started homesteading, even if it's just chickens or even if it's just one garden, don't be discouraged by how much work it is. When we first started, I remember starting with seven chicks. That's what I started with, seven chicks, and I thought it was the best thing in the whole wide world. In a single four by eight raised garden box. Out of, made out of two by four. Yeah, it was yeah. very small. Um, but it was amazing. That's what worked for us then. And now we have, now we have what we have now, yeah. which is a million animals. And we just put in 585 garlic. Yeah. So and things just, are changing. And we're just getting started here. You don't have to do it to that scale. It's dependent on the individual. If you just want a, a few chickens and just a small garden, you know, it's a lot less work, a lot less effort. But we like doing this. It's kind of a labor of love. So that's it for today, though. Yeah. So thanks again for tuning in. And we hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you on the next one. We will. Bye. Bye.